Okay, so there, now we're recording and live transcripts are on. Okay, good. All right, well, welcome to the DEI working group meeting. Uh, we've talked about some things and we didn't record it, so too bad for you. And we're gonna move on to the next thing, which is, um, so this is about recognizing contributors and recognizing contributions. So we have we have two metrics that are kind of similar and we were trying to separate the two of them. So we have recognizing contributors, which is a metric. So recognizing contributions and recognizing contributors. Um, I think, yeah, I think the spreadsheet just needs to change okay. to have as to opposed to, to okay. yeah. Okay. Um, and then the other one was contribution attribution. So those are the two that we were kind of looking at. I was trying to think about ways that, because I think we had a discussion about this before and we were able to kind of separate them. And so this is kind of what I put down is, is attribution is ensuring that authors are identified on work that they contributed to. So it's kind of like how we have that contribution section down at the end of a metric. So we're just making sure that attribution is being provided where we need to provide attribution. So I likened it to being an author on a paper. Like you're just, you're given attribution for having worked on a paper. The recognition comes from some sort of promotion or something a little bit beyond just having your name on the item that you worked on, you know, like more than just being listed as a conference organizer, but actually like maybe tweeting it out or putting it on LinkedIn or like, like really kind of pushing it out a little bit. And I had suggested maybe to, to help with the, relieve the confusion, we could talk about promoting contributors or promoting contributions, not like promoting to get them, but like, you know, like promoting them, like, hey, you know, the work that, you know, that Amy's doing is amazing. And we just want to, we just want to recognize that. So that's the kind of the difference between the two that I see, kind of reading them and remembering our conversations. And when people think about this. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Uh, yeah. I might suggest a different word than promoting, because yeah. to me, that means making them a maintainer okay. or like yeah, moving yeah, them yeah, up yeah, a ladder. Yeah. Yep. Um, but like maybe like ap appreciating or something about appreciation, contributor appreciation, or okay, yeah, um, no, I like that. And so, so then, oh, go ahead, Amy. Besides like tweeting, would that be like contributor items, like everyone who did a release got t-shirts or whatever? Yeah, yep. It, it okay. could be things like um, you know, for the podcasts <laughs> we we would send like um, uh, like the poker chips and a thank you card, you know, that kind of thing. And they're, I mean, they're, they're certainly uh, attributed on the podcast. <laughs> Their name is on there. So we make sure attribution is certainly there. Yeah, that in my head now is, is solidified. Now I, now I get, I get it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for doing that again. Cause I, I, Feel like i've been in those conversations and i just because i'm the one who added that to the agenda and i yeah. was like i don't know that i know what the difference is so thank you but then we i did think if we change this to well this would be then um what did we call it appreciating oops i'm not sure if all projects do the attribution i mean like i don't know if openstack does well, that's, I mean, we have the, the metric for it. We recommend that you do do it, so. Well, I mean, like, we'll put a, a page out with all the contributors of a release, and yeah. maybe that's attribution. Yeah, but that like, would be attribution. Yeah. Each file in the code base does not have who's worked on it unless you go into the review system. Yeah, no, I, I think that's completely fine. Okay. Yep, that would be it. And then like appreciating them would be like, we're having a party for all the people on this list. <laughs> we're gonna send everybody on this list t-shirts. Okay. So that would kind of be the two differences. Then I, I did think that maybe 
hmm. some of these visuals might be better in attribution. Just in the visuals that we're looking at, um, Amy, are things like uh, recognizing people on an open collective budget or just recognizing people like on their GitHub profiles. It's not really appreciating them at all, but it's just ensuring that we recognize some, that there is some attribution provided to, to, to people. Does that make sense, Elizabeth? Yeah, I will bring up one thing we're going through with CentOS. We yeah. wanted to um, like past directors, past project leads, past SIG leads. We wanted to make a page, you know, thanking them and stuff. And one yeah. thing that came up was GDPR. Okay. That's so the ability for them to say, I do not want my name listed. Okay. No, I like that. So that uh, might be something to take into consideration too. Yeah, I'll just, I'll put a comment in here. I'm not sure where it would fit in this, but I, I um, GDPR like impacts how to let people opt out. Yeah, if it's going to be like a public yep. thing versus just like a thank you note we send in the mail or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we know like if you contributed, we are not going through the code base and removing your name from Git logs. No. But if we do have a page that yep. thanks you and you don't want to be up there anymore, we will remove you. All right. So like the attribution, not not you, you don't go and not the actual take, contributions, yeah. their name on the contributions. Yep, no, I gotcha. Okay, no, I got that note down. Thanks, Amy. And so then I think, I do think some of these visuals that we have here should probably just move over. This is kind of like the, the Git log, basically, that Amy was just talking about. It's just the insights on GitHub. Um, and so maybe we should move some of those over. And then we could talk about here, like visualizations may not be applicable here, but and some of these would move over too, but we could have like um, some talk about like thank you pages or some talk about. Yeah, like top top 10, whatever, yeah. Yep, thank you events, um, sending the, the sending the t-shirts and thank you notes and all that kind of stuff. So I think that's really where this would go then. If that, does that work for you? It works for me. Okay, so then that would be, this this would be recognize this would become appreciating, right? Appreciating contributors. And then I'm gonna delete this. All right, I'll update the spreadsheet. So um, okay, great. Super. Um Oh, whoops. Oh yeah, no, I got that right. Okay, anyway. Um, okay, great. And where, do you know where, do you remember where the other one is? It's an evolution. It's an evolution. There you go. This one here. Okay. So this is fully released. Too. So I, I think maybe the only thing that I would have to do is maybe um, add some of the visuals from okay 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 um great okay cool all right any other questions on that? Okay, all good. All right. So metrics around environmental sustainability. I'm Elizabeth. Did you put that in there? I just copied it from last week. Okay. Um, but uh, Jennifer, I think, was the one who brought that okay. up. But so I'm not really sure what what was on her mind around it. Okay. Sean and I actually had a conversation um, with somebody from Future Way at the member summit. And Future Way is the like American-based group for Huawei. 
They're based out in San Francisco. And Future Way was really interested in really understanding kind of the, some of the environmental impact that different programming languages might have. So maybe something is there as well. Sean, do you want to talk about that at all or? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's, a, it's a little ambiguous. I mean, they're really looking at energy consumption questions and we discussed the possibility, you know, a couple of different approaches. One would be to look at a hosting provider like Amazon or, or Azure and get some real world data on what things consumed, uh, what kinds of programs consumed what energy. I think one of the gaps that need to be resolved is understanding how they will count idle time. Uh, I think a lot of compute uh, energy consumption actually occurs when nothing's happening. Uh, their core question seems to be to want to understand how <coughs> software written to do the same thing. So common algorithms uh, consume more or less act, uh, energy based on the language. So that's a that's a question that can be answered in a laboratory setting where we just write the same algorithm in a number of different languages and evaluate the energy consumption. And I, like I said, though, the, the, the tricky part will be when uh, if we hear back from them is how do we account for the idle time? The, because idling is where a lot of energy gets burned. Do they have any documentation on, on this that we could maybe look at or? There was a PowerPoint that mm -hmm. was shared with us, but we didn't get a copy of it. And a professor, there is, there was some research. Do you remember the yeah professor from Tennessee or something? Yeah, yeah, I think it was Texas A and M. But yeah, they they had done some very um, some very basic initial studies, but with unsophisticated algorithms. So okay. I mean, that seems like a really hard problem to solve. And yeah, no, it's, it's an interesting problem. For sure. And I don't think you'd get any useful data from the cloud providers because yeah. they don't necessarily know who runs what language on their systems. Well, I th so I think they probably do know who, like what, executables are being run on all of their systems because they're virtual machines and they would have access to the processes and things um i i would be surprised i, I won't be surprised if they won't share that data but i would be surprised <laughs> if they didn't have it okay um you know, I think kind of, um, anyway, I think maybe you'll need a little more information. Yeah, and um, um, they took our info, but I don't think we grabbed theirs. Uh, okay. So it's kind of a wait and see. Okay, well, I, I actually have the connection via LinkedIn, so I could, yeah, I could do that as well. Okay, great. Hey, Matt, not to like backtrack any, but I just realized as you were flipping through this a spreadsheet that we do have that whole section on recognition of good work. So can we lump all of those ideas into that appreciation or like lump move, some of them? Move something? this one out maybe even. I mean, at this point, you know, like it's kind of like what we did with common. No. Wait, where was recogni recognition of good work? Where was that? Here. Was that under DEI? uh the recognition yeah the appreciating contributors as it right is so go back that's under go DEI. back over to yeah go back over to DEI for a second so if you scroll down like there's a whole wait go down a little yeah there's a whole section there so maybe we can just delete that and put those ideas in can we oh. lump those into that one yeah. appreciation yeah. metric or do you think there's something yeah and i mean i think what's gonna yes and so where did we have that it was just under project and community yeah so we could get it. Like, do we need all of those separate metrics? I don't know. Maybe we do, but. Actually, yeah, let me put it here.
like all of those ideas might yep. go into that one metric yeah i see what you're saying well i mean we have so like that i mean i guess we do have some docs started but like is there anything in them i don't know let me look Like recognition type, right? Like that almost seems like it could be. No, they're all just blank, I think. Okay. Because like recognition type, that would be exactly what we would put in like the right. appreciating. Like here are ways to do it, you know. Right, right. Have an event, have a uh, whatever, send them poker chips, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, so maybe when I'm doing that, take a look at like the basically recognition type and recognition value. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I think all of those are empty. Okay. Yeah, there's nothing in them but the template. Okay, well, let me like. So even if we just like lumped it in as like other considerations or just something in, you know, yeah. objectives or things like that. Okay, so then not trying to give you more work. No. <laughs> I can help you with it if you want. <laughs> um, like consider, I'll just put like consider type and value from below. And, and then I mean once we can kind of just incorporate that thinking into this metric, then we can just get rid of these rows, I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking too. Okay. Yeah, no, that sounds good. And then the other ones were like contribution volume and contribution type. But those are like covered in other things. Yeah. I need to take a look at these too. And again, probably nothing in these. Yeah, just the template. Okay. Okay. Um, well, for the time being, let's just take a look at these two. Okay. As related to that one. Okay. All right, cool. Sounds good. Yeah, the, the less we can get in here, the better sometimes. Like, especially if we can get rid of red rows. That's what I'm about. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, speaking of that, uh, let's move on to the last thing we have, which was there are two event location metrics that I was taking a look at. Um, oh, here we go. Rows 21 and 22, event locations and event location inclusivity. And so event locations is about recognizing where events are located globally. You know, so making sure that we have chaos events in the US, making sure that we have them in Europe, making sure that we have them in Africa, making sure that we have them in Latin America, for example, maybe in the future. Um, but like that we try not to just make everybody come to California all the time for every chaos event. So that's really what this metric is about. And then event location inclusivity is about um, kind of the, the, the government or, or um, uh, like the, 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 the specific location and how friendly or unfriendly that particular location is, like for example, uh, to LGBTQ plus individuals. And that's what this is about. So it's not really about even ensuring that you're globally located, but you're also thoughtful about if, if you're working globally, you're, you're also thoughtful about like where you are globally. You know what I mean? That you don't just say, well, we were in, in Asia and you end up in a country that <laughs> doesn't, uh, isn't very inclusive. So the question was, do you think we could, you know, kind of bring these two together as a single metric around, say, like event locations or event location inclusivity? Like, because to me, even if we say like event location inclusivity, that could cover kind of both, that we're being inclusive of a global community and we're also thoughtful about when we land in a particular country <laughs> that we're thinking about kind of the, 
the the laws that exist within that country. So I, I was thinking that maybe we could just take event locations and put it into event locations inclusivity. You know, kind of mush those two together. I saw a thumbs up from you, Elizabeth. I'm trying to think if there's any time we wouldn't do both. Like we wouldn't care. In which case they would need to stay separate, but I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, it, and it, yeah, it, it's a good point. It seems like they would be reasonable to bring together all the time. Because you could fail on location metrics by always having on the same location. But it's a location that's safe for everyone to attend. You know, so you could still fail part of a metric or not fail bad, but you know. Right. So yeah, I think they could be together. Okay, great. All right, so the um, cool thing is, is if we bring them together, we get rid of another row. <laughs> so that would potentially be, that's all I really care about. <laughs> it's getting rid of rows. Um, we could potentially just remove one of these rows just by bringing these two together here. And I think the nice thing is too, both of these have quite a bit of content in them. So whoever put in, you know, like thinking about what we would like to work on, I think merging these two might be a pretty easy way to bring another metric forward from the working group. Okay, cool. Um, anybody want to take a look at that? about merging those two? I can, if nobody else wants to, I can. Okay. I don't wanna steal the opportunity away from anyone, but I'm happy to do that. Okay, and like I said, I think, I'll, I, think I don't think it should be terribly long, kind of like, these up here it's just mostly like rearranging things you know the appreciating contributors part i think it's mostly just kind of rearranging things um and I, I think to me i don't know what you're thinking but it seems like event location inclusivity is the the name to go with huh. yeah, yeah i agree that seems reasonable to me okay Okie doke. Look at that. We talked about weird food for 15 minutes and then <laughs> we slowly made our way. We slowly made our way here. Um, is there anything else that people would like to talk about before we wrap up? Anita, do you have any updates that you want to talk about work that you're doing? I don't know if you're... Um, yeah, maybe just a little. Yeah. So uh, last week made it one month since I started the survey and we've had over, we have about a total of 80 persons open the, the survey form and just 16 persons completely went through the survey. And so um, I reached out to Matt. That the last time we discussed about this, we said the one-on-one -on -one course would be a lot better since the indication for people indicating interest to be interviewed is not really going as we thought. Only one person dropped their email so far. So I reached out to Matt to uh, find out if we can actually um, start reaching out to people to see if they'll be interested in participating. But I also had to curate the response we had so far. So I'm going to drop the link to I created it in a Google Doc. You can also go over it. These are like um, most of the response that people have given. And for persons that completed, the 16 persons that completed it to the end, this is their response. And um, I created these questions in particular because these are the questions that had most, um, most interactions on them. And um, so, so far, this is what we have. If there are any thoughts on this, I'd really appreciate. Anita, are you, have you kind of gone through this data? Yeah. Are you, are there yes. any like trends that you're kind of seeing? 
Yeah. Um. Sorry, the text is a bit too too small. Let me try and increase the size. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. I'm just mostly curious because I don't think we'll kind of get through it here. Yeah. I'm yeah. I understand. Curious if you're if you're like feeling okay. things from the data. So from the feedback, majority of the participants are not aware of um, chaos, nor are they aware of the chaos metrics. That's what the 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 response they're feeling indicates. However, most persons went to the point of expressing their thoughts on um, diversity, equity, and inclusion in communities that they've participated in. But when when it comes to like their thoughts on DEI and chaos metrics, we have very few engagements with questions like that. But we also got some feedback from other persons that say they've um, used the chaos metrics for their events and it has helped, especially for the um, in-person events since the pandemic and all of that. So I think we also have good um, feedback from the survey as well. So based on based on that, like, are there, you know, do you think that it would be about questions more focused just on the community work? You know, because I think the interview questions were going to kind of be follow ups under the assumption that people were participating with some of the chaos metrics. And if there's not a lot of that, do you think the interviews would change a lot? Well, um. I think the reason this is this way because most of the persons that participated have no idea at all of the chaos metrics. Okay. So I guess that's why we got very few feedback regarding the chaos metrics from them. Because okay. if, as I went through the response, I noticed that majority of the persons have not even like, and in as much as I indicated the link to the mm -hmm. chaos metrics in the questions, we also had very few persons indicate interest that they're familiar with it. Okay. So I guess that's the reason for that. So um, I'm hoping there will be a way to go about this. So so then like the interviews wouldn't necessarily, uh, yeah, I guess because only one person left their email. So the interviews in a second round would be trying to identify people who do engage with the DEI metrics. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So, I mean, if, like the, one of my first thoughts are, you know, any, some of the organizations that submit events to the badging program. Yeah, that, that would be a good part. Cause I think one of the persons that um, went through this survey has um, applied for a DEI badge before okay. and their feedback was how the DEI metrics helps their event, which I think was a really good feedback. So I think if we had reached out or if we had more persons that have gone through the DEI badging process, we would have gotten really good um, updates on that. Okay. Yeah, because I'm starting to think that, like, as we reach out to folks, one of the things that could come of this is trying to understand maybe some of the different contexts within which the metrics are being used. You know, so like obviously badging, we know, and like kind of if you're engaging with the metrics kind of in a badging context, like how is it helping you? And if you're engaging with the metrics, uh, say as an internal organization, you know, to try to support efforts internally to an organization, how are the metrics helping you? Or how is chaos helping you articulate those metrics? You know what I mean? Like we may be able to think about reaching out to folks in different settings or different contexts that we kind of know um, as to how they're engaging with the DEI metrics. Does that does that make sense? Yeah, that, okay. that makes sense. So, I mean, I think a few of the contexts, and maybe I should write these down. I think a few of the contexts are things like, um, it's clearly badging. Um, so I might want to say like internal work. So like, are the metrics helping shape the way people think about internal projects? Um, I'm also thinking that the chaos, here, I'll share my screen. So I have these right here. So internal work, you know, how,
Okay. Let me say internal positions. Um, I, I'm wondering if if how many people are like they have metrics that they are using around DEI internally, and chaos can serve as a place to kind of publish those metrics. Yeah. Um, does anybody else have any thoughts on kind of the different contexts that might might exist in this space? No. Okay. Um, so, Anita, why don't you and I kind of connect and think about who some of these people might be that are working in these different contexts? And then, yeah, sure. Yeah, and then think about how to reach out to them. All right. Okay, then. Yeah. So, I, and I did see your message this morning on Slack. So, I'll just follow up there. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, right on. Cool. Thank you. Um, does anybody else have anything for the meeting today? Okay. Nope. All right. Thanks for Bye. coming, everybody. We'll All right. Time. Hello. Bye. Bye.